What's going on everybody? Alex here, Nick and Florida Landscape. I know it's been a long time since we did a video. We've been very, very busy. But today we've got a fun landscaping job coming up. So I figured I could bring you guys along with me, or with us. And uh, before we take off here, I'll show you the shop and show you how it's coming along so far. What we've got going on in there. So for those of you guys that haven't seen it, this is our new shop. Guys are loading up. I'm in their way, um, but we've done a we've done a lot here over the past couple of weeks. That guy right there, you've never seen before. That's a 322 Bobcat. Uh, we purchased that. You've seen this guy cleaned up, sitting where she belongs, ready to go make some money. The T595 is not here, um, but I don't think you guys have seen these storage racks. Maybe if you follow us on Instagram, you've seen these. Uh, but we got some big racks here, all of our materials, good stuff on it. And we got all of our tools set up over here. And that's pretty much it. Haven't really done too much. Just trying to get organized the best we can. And then you guys haven't seen this guy either. This is the MT85, um, no, we don't need either one of those. We bought this guy too, so trying to get set up for these smaller landscape jobs. Uh, we were already set up for the bigger ones, but trying to get set up for everything. So now we've got this guy, we've got a T595, we got a 331 excavator over there, and then we've got the 322 excavator over there. So. We've got um, pretty much a big loader, a small loader, a big excavator, and a little excavator. So I think, cross my fingers, should be ready to rock and roll. We don't have any major breakdowns. Uh, this 322 needs a little love. I just picked that guy up. So we'll, uh, we'll be going over that and probably giving it a paint job and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then this horse over here is broke down once again. If you've been following us for a while on YouTube, you know that truck has just been a pain in the you know what. Uh, never, really has never been consistent other than last summer when our other truck went down. That thing, we ran it straight for probably two months and that's the longest it's ever ran straight, which thankfully it did whenever we needed it to. But other than that, it's always had some kind of issue right now i'm not sure what's going on it's something electrical something's draining the battery so we shut the truck off at night go home all the lights are off everything's off like it should be come back to work in the morning and for whatever reason both batteries are dead so i can't figure it out and i don't really know how to even start tracing that when nothing's on so i'm probably going to have to take it in but it is what it is <laughs> like a top. So we got the 322 unloaded in there put away. The guys are gonna finish loading up. I'm gonna head out, go get materials. We'll catch up with you guys whenever we get to the job. This is pretty cool. Figured I'd show you guys this. At the side farm. Right in the middle of the field. So he's cutting right now. So he stacks all the pallets up on the back where that black thing is, and they drop them in. You can see that yellow piece moving over there. That thing's stacking sod. And there it is. And then over there, you got their whole irrigation system that waters all this stuff. The crazy thing is, is they have to keep this cut, so they're always cutting this stuff. 
keep it nice and fresh for every day, but you can see in the mirror there, you can see little strips of sod, and then you can see all this. They're getting loaded up over there right now. Nice grass everywhere. Pretty cool. I had to make another pit stop at Sonnenberg's here, pick up our uh, block. They got it all here. Rock, mulch, topsoil, fill dirt, stones, boulders, retaining wall blocks, pavers. You name it, they got it. Place is huge. Now maybe we can get to the job and it's raining again unfortunately. Um, just talked to Nick and he said it poured at the job site so we shall see what that looks like whenever we get there and get to installing. Alright guys so here's a very important part of what we're doing. So for this corner we're making a circle. It's going to be a 6 inch retaining wall block with a 4 inch cap so it's going to be 10 inches tall. And what we're doing right now we've got our base dug out. And we're laying down weed barrier before we put our rock in to make sure that that rock stays good and clean and provides a good base for a long time for this corner here. But you don't have to go too crazy. We're putting three to four inches of base down here. And like I said, it's a six inch retaining wall block with a four inch cap. And then running over here is just gonna be regular edging. So I wanted to show you guys that real quick before we got too far while the trench was still opened up so you could kind of see what it looks like. but. That's what we have, so we made all of our marks, we dug our trench out, and now we're putting down the weed fabric before we put the rock in, like I said, to make sure that rock stays a clean base. So, and this is obviously the first step of any of your projects, you're going to have to do your hardscaping first. We got one other little spot over here that we're doing, so we're going to have a Japanese maple back here. So we're doing the same thing, so we got our trench dug out. We'll put some weed barrier down there, we'll put our rock in, we'll build that wall, and then we'll put weed fabric all around that. So this is the first step of this project, but I'll show you real quick the scope of work and exactly what we're gonna be doing here. So over here, you can't see right now because the shadow, but over here is all gonna be rock landscape. The, the Japanese maple is gonna be kind of the accent back there. Um, then you got some spireas that are gonna be going in there. And we've got some coral bells and some hostas as well. And then we've got some more spireas and a burning bush that's going to be going over on this side. So not too much area, but like I said, this is a perfect example of a residential landscape. This is a new construction. Never had landscaping before, so it's easy to come in and kind of make it your own, do what you want to do. The customer's not trying to reuse anything or save anything. So starting from... Uh, fresh start or from scratch is always nice but like I said on these type of projects your hardscape is going to be your first step so we'll go ahead and knock these out and I will come back and touch base and uh, show you the next one. Alright guys so it's about time to start laying block here. We've got our base set and compacted. That was all done with our handy dandy laser level there. Spectra LL300 and the guess, I think that's what it is. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but we're using a field stone block and cap here, which is like the tan or the sandish color with like the grayish, bluish mix in it. But that's what we're using. They look good. They'll go good with the house. So, and then the edging we got too is a is like a white rough cut, which is like what this corner is here. So, we bought all the materials based off of the brick, basically in the front of the house, which is what you'll usually do. Um, but we'll start right here, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to work my way back over towards the house. 
All right guys, so we got the walls done, or the edging, whatever you want to call it. We got that done. We got the weed barrier in, and now we are working on getting the plants in. So we got our weed barrier in. We cut an X, fold it back under the weed barrier. So cut your X, fold it back under there, get it out of your way, dig your hole, and then you can fold it back and get it as close to the plant as possible. And then of course use some compost or whatever, dig your hole bigger than your plant. Got the Japanese maple in. There's that one featuring the tree of course. And it's plenty far back to give this room to grow. It's probably two and a half feet back, so plenty far back to give that room to grow. And that is full and it's gonna be full of color, so that'll be looking good. And then over here we've got like I said, we had some edging that was going to match the house up there, so our stuff's a little cleaner, it looks like, but it's the same style. So we've got that going over here, and that's going to butt up to this edging here, which is featuring a burning bush, and that will eventually fill up this circle. This burning bush will get three by three four by four somewhere in that area so that'll fill up that circle nicely but it won't come over the edging they'll be able to keep that trimmed up and this edging over here is not set yet that's just laid down there we got to straighten that up and set it but i wanted to show you guys where we were at so like i said you always want to get your any kind of your hard scape stuff done anything that needs a base you want to get that stuff done first and then move on to which our next step with weed barrier and then we get these plants in the ground. And I'll show you the rock we're using real quick. The sod is not for this job, that's for another job. We're heading to after this one. This is the rock we're using. It's called trap rock. It's like a blue, it's really dirty, but I don't know if you, you can't really tell. But really dusty but that's what it is so so now that we've got the plants laid out we just had to dig those get those buried in the ground and then get our rock laid if you guys don't know how we go about putting our rock into the beds I'll link a video right here you can check that out and it shows you exactly how we go about applying our rock and then after we got through with that all we had left to do was the caps and that I'll save for another video that can be a little bit tricky especially when you got curves like this but like I said I'll save that for another video all right guys, real quickly, I wanna walk over with you guys how I came up with these materials, why I use these materials, and how I go about choosing my materials. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is the house, the surroundings, see what kind of colors you have, if there's any natural stone, anything that you have, any kind of wood, anything that you can go off of to try to draw into the landscape. So for this one, like I said, I went with a block that kind of matched the brick. It would blend well with the brick. And then for that stone edging that we used, I knew right off the bat when I saw that stone on the house, I knew what would work. I knew what's available, something similar to that. Uh, that's about as close as you're gonna get. So with that one, it was really easy. And the rock, of course, matches the siding. You'll see these after pictures it's a little bit dusty and like I said whenever I was showing you it in the back of the truck it's a little bit dusty but when it washes off or gets washed off it turns a little bit more of like a purplish bluish um, maybe some would call it a grayish uh, but it'll match that siding really well so I think all the materials we chose on this specific job were actually in my eyes kind of easy to pick like I said because of what we were given and because I know the materials well I know what's available um, but if you're new to this just Take it one step at a time, look at the house, look at your surroundings, like I said, and just try to draw anything that you can from that into the landscaping and you'll be just fine. Thanks for watching guys, as always, we appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next one.